Hello, good morning, good evening, good afternoon. Welcome to the show. Welcome to Uncensored, the truth about money. Thank you so much for joining us. We truly appreciate it. Um, so, as you would know, we are talking about uh, businesses. So, as we said, um, beginning of the season, that whether you already have an existing business or you want to start a business, um, our aim here on Uncensored is to provide you with that information and to help you basically to kickstart your, your business, you know. And um, so far, we've had a lot of people that have come to us and really grateful. They're really grateful of the information that we give to them. And we just want to say thank you to everyone that shares our stuff, that shares our stuff with other people. We truly appreciate it. And we truly appreciate that we are able to help people, right? So, um, so today we are speaking about something. I think I feel like this is something that we should have uh, uh, covered um, during maybe episode one or episode two, because this is very important for any type of business. Today we are talking about uh, marketing, right? And as you would know, we do our absolute best to bring you the best people <laughs> in the game uh, with whatever topic that we are covering. So today, I don't know how to introduce this gentleman, this fellow. <laughs> A very good brother of mine, he calls himself Maluma <laughs> That sounds creepy now. <laughs> he calls himself Maluma. <laughs> so we have uh, Mr. Patel Mosia. Welcome to the show, man. Thank you. Thank you very much. Grand. Right. Except that Maluma Wabantuana. But you No, no, no. Maluma, period. Maluma Wabantuana is... is a, it sounds creepy in these days. <laughs> no, you're right. Yeah. You're right. Thank you so much, man. Welcome to the show. It's a pleasure. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Uh, so, obviously, um, I don't know. How many years have you been doing this, like, uh, marketing and branding? Sheesh. Uh, I have to calculate my age now. <laughs> <laughs> no, roughly. It's been like 10 uh, years, more than It's over years. 15 years, actually. Jeez. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, over 15 years. Uh, yeah, yeah. And you were saying just before the show started that when you guys started, it was pretty much... Um, there were, there were no real courses. And so there was... Like, you still had your BCom marketing. Sure. But now when... Like, you start with your marketing... Um, like... So how I fell into marketing was that, <laughs> which was pretty funny. Yeah. Um, first year out of school, my friends and I are like, what's the quickest way to make money right now? Let's throw a party. Um, which it still can't work. I mean, there's even movies made. Yeah, uh, you know, no, no, no. I mean, there was a movie made. I forgot what it was called. Project X. Like where these oh, guys yeah, 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 yeah. did that massive party and they make it, make, uh, made a lot of money. So... I think we had just watched Project X. Um, and then, uh, yeah, so we just and thought, you know, I'd throw a party. You're old. Man. Yeah, old. <laughs> I'm joking. Malu, <laughs> man. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Sorry, man. Yeah. No, it's fine. I mean, the craze, like, don't, don't help me hide that anymore. Um, so, yeah, we thought, let's throw a party. Uh, and then naturally, we thought, how are we going to make money besides gate takings? Because we don't have the money to get the DJs, because we didn't know that many DJs back then. Yeah. Only knew like one or two, uh, actually three, but we needed like even bigger. And then you needed a venue, you needed a sound, yeah, yeah, you needed yeah. security. Like the more we got into it, the more it was like, oh crap, we don't have money for this. Like yeah. we need, <laughs> um, you know, ambulances, we need fencing, we need security Ooh, yeah, guards, yeah. we need lights. Just, like, it, we were really planning something big, but the budget wasn't there. And then yeah. it was like, okay, cool get a sponsor and then we go into getting a sponsor and the sponsor's like yeah what's in it for me sure Aish, uh, I should be advertising <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but I mean I've always been that guy who's challenged um, nicely like in a good way when when there's something between what I want uh, I do whatever I can to get it so mm -hmm. there was all right you need to show me the benefits. Luckily, uh, a big brother of mine gave me a template. At, bah! Bamba boy. Mm. My template. Mm. Uh, I'm not going to spoon feed you. Learn from it. So I learned from it. Uh, checked out sponsor benefits. Why the benefits? Sponsorship tiers. Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. So you look at your your market. Now all of a sudden we had to analyze. All of a sudden I started learning about LSMs. Mm. What are LSMs? Okay, age group, uh, 
demographics uli bahlala kuphi banemali banangakhi amantombi bazana abafana ukoko bomkhulu you know but then uphuma ngobani isikhathi because LSM gets really deep like you can mm-hmm. analyze even ukuthi bangena ngobani isikhathi emsebenzini emsebenzini eh bayangani endleleni babona ini badlula kuphi bayangakhi lapho badlula khona but that is kind of thing I can feel office in before banging the office in by and that so mm-hmm. LSM analysis can get really really deep but anyway that was a bit of a digression mm-hmm. long story short I started doing uh, experiential marketing it had a name it wasn't just uh, create an experience that the brand can plug into which is what I was trying to do so that the brand can then sponsor or e our team lebe spana a dry lane it can then justify in the boardroom good to wise sponsor because we created something that is appealing to uh, the brand positioning mm-hmm. um so then that was called experiential marketing where you take um a brand and people get to live out the the brand experience so it's like if Heineken throws a party mm-hmm. they throw a certain kind of a party if uh, mm-hmm. if BMW throws a party The experiential marketing would mean that you sit down tlambe all the seats are made of the leather that you sit on in a BMW mm-hmm. um mm-hmm. you know you get to be shuttled from the parking to the party using BMWs doesn't jar right yes, yes, yes. they take you through the entire kind of uh product experience mm-hmm. in that event so even the food has to be of a certain standard the music etc cetera, etc cetera. Mm-hmm. so that was experiential marketing and then i fell in love with it um and then i was studying bcom at the time i dropped out i was like nah mm-hmm. like the stuff is a little bit of a waste of time for me because mm-hmm. i i'm already doing what i'm studying but what i'm studying is a very far distance from what i'm doing now mm-hmm. it's like you're almost not going to use it except like you like the four p's you almost don't use it at work for your day to day but mm-hmm. it's kind of then you're thinking but it's not like you'll use the entire textbook you can sure, go back to the textbook sure. for certain calculations and uh, uh you know strategies to justify maybe if you are an agency but when you're doing it for yourself for your own company or your own exper- product experience uh, you almost necessarily don't need the qualification but you need the knowledge mm. um and just the talent yeah sometimes you end up doing stuff but you don't know what you're doing like you don't have a name for it yeah like, so like so us. now you are um fresh out of high school and is this so before this because to me it sounds like you threw a really <laughs> big party so is this is this um have you like before that okay I shot my party before or you just went you just went big uh, I think I did like I I used to throw quite a few parties um house parties yeah um Did I have a yeah no I did have a nice like backyard experience but I'm not too sure how old I was. Yeah. So I, I used to have really cool parties with my friends where um it depends what I felt like that yeah like sure. but there was always a big deal. You even got like, a sponsor. Did were you able to get a sponsor? Not for my birthdays. Oh no, the one no, year I, for the for the big party that you threw. Yeah, the, the that that big party got weird. Like <laughs> like <laughs> one happened but the other one didn't happen but it all like It took me through quite a journey. Like I was about 19. Sure. And then next thing I find myself in meetings with Alfa Romeo. Jeez. Um back then there was a, a a black version of GQ called Blink magazine. All right. Doesn't exist anymore. Uh that's where Kojo before I think used to be an editor. Um what else? Men's health, I got involved with men's health as well. Um Hennessy when it was just launching in the country mm. that's how old I am I guess um, <laughs> and then the second night taboo opened I ended up there because of the relationship with Hennessy and mm-hmm. one of the guys that used to be oh that was a contestant on uh the apprentice South Africa mm. so yeah the, the party got like way bigger and then we were about to sign and i forgot who pulled out yeah blink magazine didn't come to the party at the time mm. yeah losing them as the as the uh, media sponsor then mm. compromised things but alfa romeo was in yeah mm. um they had assigned cars for the event um sure they were going to bring in some chairs like some seats there and some of the ladies uh peroni the bear back then was going to come on board 
Yeah. So now, like that story you just said, you mentioned a lot of things. Where I'm like, I have a lot of questions. <laughs> but one thing I just want to know, <laughs> like, what what do you mean by um, sponsored tears? So sponsored tears. Um, say you're throwing an event, you've sure. got something called a title sponsor. So sure. usually it's a uncensored brought to you by Absa. Sure. That's a title sponsor. Sure. Um, or uncensored sponsored by, you know, Absa. And then you've got like your second tier, depending on how you want to call it. I mean, you can package them and say platinum, diamond, silver, gold, bronze. Mm, mm. It's just five tiers depending on how much. So you would then look at your budget and say, right, I need two million bucks for my party. Mm. So either you've got platinum or a rather diamond who then pays for everything. It's two million mm. bucks. But you can still add on if you want to. Like mm. If the, your diamond sponsor is cool with it to say, right, I'll pay for everything, but I want exclusivity. You also need to be careful that when you do approach brands, you can't approach brands that are competing with one another. So okay. you might find, let's say you can go for a beer, but a beer then doesn't necessarily want you going for another beer, obviously. Uh, and then they can say, no, we don't even want you going for another alcoholic beverage. So no whiskey, no ciders allowed except mm -hmm. me. And then they say, actually, we want to be the only... Uh, Beverage allowed it. So no soft drink sponsor. So you can't have a beer and then a Coca-Cola just beer as mm -hmm. your sponsor. Mm -hmm. um, then you can have something maybe afterwards where it's all right, but can I get a maybe a clothing sponsor, mm. you know, for the presenters or the hosts? Can I get a food sponsor? Uh, maybe Nando's comes in, you know. Mm. Can I get a music sponsor? Maybe you get Sony to come in and they'll sponsor your sound, but then they get some branding mm. there, depending on how big your event. But obviously you have to have the whole, my event has got so many people, biggest event yes, happens yes. this way, I, everyone looks forward to it. Nowadays you have to add on social media. Like back in my days, we didn't have social media to promote <laughs> the stuff. So yeah. it was literally just about how many people can you rock at your party? Yeah. And that's it, you know, it wasn't that okay, um, the build up, you know, how, many, how much engagement is there on social media uh, during the event, how much engagement, how much coverage, and post-event, what's, what's the lingering so effect? So basically the huge thing for them here is, is, is advertising. It is. Like how much of the, their brand are you getting out there? Are you getting out event? there to which people? Are you getting it to people that will buy the brand afterwards? Okay. Or are you getting it to people that don't give a damn about the brand? Sure. They, they couldn't care less. It's like if... I we I really don't like making a reference to alcohol, but like <laughs> they, they have almost the biggest activity in terms of marketing. Or back in the day, like back in the day, the ones that made the most events were cigarettes and alcohol yes. beverages. But let me put it this way: um, I want Tabapuza e Kingsley, right? <laughs> I'm not gonna market Red Bull to them. Sure. They're not gonna buy Red Bull. Sure. Sure. The, the thing they would buy back when it was introduced was Dragon when it was still five rand. Sure. They're not about to buy an energy drink that costs 20 bucks. Sure. So there's no point for Red Bull going to that market if you come to them and say, hey, I'm throwing a party. Unless you're saying to Red Bull, hey, those people that are drinking Dragon actually want a better version of Dragon. They see themselves better. And they're also starting to make more money. A lot of them are starting to work Mm. Uh, better jobs and have more disposable income. Mm. Then, yeah, Red Bull is sort of interested. But if you if you don't have that market that can afford Red Bull mm. as a natural choice, not as a no, mm. Red Bull is mm. not coming. Mm. But mm. also, um, a dragon will then say, yeah, but I already have the market. Why should I sponsor you? Mm. So let's pick it up a little bit <laughs> before we just this episode is just about sponsors. Yeah. Which is which is great, you know. But let's pick it up a little bit. So so the whole reason for this episode is just to talk about marketing, marketing yeah. you know? Yeah. And I feel like um you would assume that a lot of people know this, but it, it, it doesn't seem like it. You know, I've seen businesses where um I would pass by and be like, but dude, this is not your place <laughs> you yeah, know, as a yeah. business, you know? Yeah, you might be in the wrong place. Yeah, yeah, you might be in the wrong place, you know? And you would assume, like, before you start a business, you do your research, as you say, you look at your demographics, you're the people that would, potential clients and all those things. But surprisingly, people don't, don't do that type of research, you know? So just to help... Um, whoever's watching this video yeah. like what what do you feel like is 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 
something important that like dude with this you there's no way around it you have to you know i think i'll put it in two ways right sure i'll put it for a small business owner and then maybe even for your uh i'm about to get into something big kind of uh, sure. person you know um so for your small business uh let's say what should we use i'm a god or what i'm a god sure or coffee okay let's say Up coffee coffee. Coffee. Sure. coffee yeah all right but even I think we'll also go back to Amakota. Uh just so that because I mean coffee you you really gotta love coffee for you to do it. <laughs> um but between the two, you've got to look at number one, how many people around me um consume it. Mm. Number two, competitors. Mm. Like who's there, who's around me? Okay, if there is competition where are their weaknesses? Where do you see mm, a gap? Mm, you know, mm, mm, what's mm. different about what you're going to offer? Like, am I cheap? So I go, I take a little longer money or mm. will your product be cheaper? Which I don't advise. Um, this is where now maybe you get very advanced later on when you kind of do your MBA and you use something called a blue ocean strategy <laughs> okay. where you're trying to, you know, change your product so much that, you've almost created a new market within a market. Okay. You know, so now maybe instead of Ikota being so many layers, you made Ikota into like fast food where you can almost schedule it and, and, and make it scientific in that Ikota will come out every seven minutes because you've created a system. Mm -hmm, That's mm -hmm. almost like a blue ocean strategy. Where it's like, okay. Wow. You've taken the way Ikota is made to make it faster because the gap is that Ikota takes way too long to get it it's almost similar to what McDonald's did in terms of way graphics. back in the day. Yeah. yeah they went for yeah. a blue ocean strategy in terms of drive throughs Yes. Instead of like me parking and sitting and coming inside, yeah. then they started with a roadhouse. Roadhouse became drive through to say, hey, I don't have time. Let me just come. Sure. Through. Sure. So that is a blue, blue ocean strategy because you're looking at what everyone's doing, but what is it that you can do that's Improve. different and sets you apart in the same industry? So that's blue ocean. Mm. Whereas your other, I think it's Red Ocean, would then be, are you more expensive, less expensive, uh, giving more value or less value? Mm -hmm. Which is neither here or there because you get yourself into a price war uh, instead of, yeah. you know, it's like, okay, yeah. Leanne and my chipsy, uh, I four. No, Leanne and my chips I three. Okay, but these ones, they put barbecue sauce and they put the steer sauce. The other one's like, yeah, but I put, um, I don't know, whatever other sauce and the other sauce. Mm. Like, we, you get those silly things and there's nothing really different about your product. <laughs> sure. like, so anybody can go anywhere and still be satisfied. Yeah. It's just a matter of maybe do I like the owner better or am I closer to the other sure. one? Sure. Um, but just to go back, yeah. um, you, ha you really have to look at what you want to do, who you want to do it for, mm. that's your market, and your competition, who else is doing it. Mm. Then you can come up with what sets you apart, right? But then this is where marketing gets deeper, which people then have almost dumped down marketing to advertising. And that's a function of marketing. It's mm -hmm. not marketing itself. Sure, sure. Marketing in itself is you establishing whether or not your product is going to be successful. Mm -hmm. You can do that by data, obviously, to say, right, there are three puzzle shops in a 20 kilometer radius. Mm -hmm. uh, they don't sell Amakota Bonke, only one sells Amakota. Uh, I think you can fit in a cot. How much is the quota that they are buying? All right, then there's four different prices. Um, do you feel like you can beat it or not? That's where you get even deeper with marketing to say, right, how much does it cost to produce all four of them? Mm. And that's where you look at from your business end. And this is what marketing really, really does when it's done at a proper level. Sure. Like if you are doing marketing for... I don't know, Apple or cool, like these big guys, sure. before they come up with a product, they have to calculate how much it's going to cost to come up with a new product. Sure. You know, and this affects how many jobs, yes. your new suppliers, your yes. location, how long will it take, all of that stuff. It gets so complex. It gets deeper to say, right, how much does it take to get your product to the person? Mm. And how long will it take for it to be profitable? Marketing has to justify that to business to say, it's worth us actually doing a hot dog in the hood versus just a maquat because mm. hot dog will cost us much less, we'll produce it much faster, and uh, even though it'll take time for people to learn what a hot dog is because mm. they're not used to it, uh, or they know what it is, but they're not used to buying it like sure, that. Sure. Uh, you know, 
but in six months' time, we, we project that we can start making a profit. Uh, we're going to get people used to everything because of our advertising yeah. and our branding, which is now another function of marketing. So marketing really is something very important for people to sit with that will determine whether or not your product or your service will work in that area. Do people need it? Are they willing to pay for it? Those are the questions you ask in marketing. And you need to establish that before you just say, my dream is a coffee shop. You open it and then mm. like, nobody has a co coffee culture. Or you're not a whole machine vibe that you get when you go to uh, a cafe. Mm. Yeah. But you know what people like that, that interests me the most? Like I feel like um, they've gotten it right is um, about my friend, Dekas. You know, because uh, those people have become <laughs> like you can't go. Number one, you can't go to any kasi where I'm not my friend. Yeah. And if you would, you would suffer. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because they're just around the corner. They're just so convenient. Yeah. Like everything that you need is is, is is just there. You know. I mean, they're not where they where there wasn't a shop. There was always been other shops. With theirs was more of a business strategy that 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 almost had their marketing a little bit. Mm. Their thing was mm. I mean, now. I mean. <laughs> We gave them up free marketing. We call them our my friend. <laughs> sure. They they call themselves my friend because they don't know what to say to us. Like <laughs> it's all a beautiful accident. Baby. Like, oh my friend, how are you? Can I help you? My yeah. Friend? Yeah. We call them my friend. We gave them free marketing. And then what they did is, is is really just a beautiful accident. They were reliable in that they had everything. Yes. But the way they solved their marketing problem in terms of marketing as a function in the business is that they decided to pull together as a couple of spaza shops create a network of buying power and then they get their products for cheap but also in the connect in the negative sense they did illegal, illegal product manufacturing where mm. <laughs> which was clever still where's the coke in Mumbai? <laughs> they just print a whole lot of labels and then they collect all the all the coke bottles and they just rebrand everything every yeah. single time and they push it out like that that way they made a product for cheaper yes and sold it at a high price, price and then yeah. they made a profit um, yeah 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 that's Clever business operations, sure. but um, what is it? Immoral or unethical. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, beautiful accident in their name, but uh, I wouldn't necessarily give them like a a great marketing <laughs> badge or, you know, applause. That yeah. I'd give them business applause, but not, yeah. but not marketing. I think I'll give black people marketing for calling them my friend. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez. Yo, unfortunately, we are out of time. <laughs> So, um, any last words, bro, before we leave? Um, uh, very important, everyone. Um, please look at where you want to sell your product, why you want to sell it, not just your passion. Um, will the people buy it? If your product exists where you want to sell it, how much is it being sold for? Uh, what's so different about yours? And what's it going to take for them to start buying yours? Very important. Uh, once you can do that, uh, you'll get to answer your new questions about what you want to do and whether it's worth doing or not. Mm. As we always say, research, research, do your research. Very important. So thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much for listening to us. Truly appreciate it. Don't forget, we are. Um, so this episode is available as audio on Google Podcast, uh, Spotify, and uh, Apple Podcast. Don't, don't forget to also, um, if you have any more questions, uh, I don't know, <laughs> Petty. <laughs> Uh, I, I, I kind of, I kind of charge, but I'll see. Petel know. is always pray, here. Pray about it. I might do it for free. <laughs> he definitely will do it for free for you guys. He's always here. So if you have any questions, please, you are more than welcome to um, send us a, a direct message on our Instagram, uh, uncensored underscore the truth about money. Thank you so much, guys. Until we meet again, cheers. Mm -hmm.